What is up, everybody? Welcome to Ride Along with Dan Dan the Fireman. I'll be going up Mount Lemon today, and I'll be showing you how to go up the mountain. Let's just do it. So this is episode two of Ride Along with Dan Dan the Fireman, Raw DDFM. The whole point of this series is to take you along with what I do, and then I point out hazards and I point out some tips while I'm riding. So it's raw, right? Ride along with Dan Dan the Fireman. Anyways. So we're gonna be going up Mount Lemon. This is in the Coronado National Forest, and it's a Friday morning, so there's not gonna be a lot of traffic, hopefully. But we do have quite a bit of things in here that can be hazards. We got bicyclists, so there's a reason why that truck is there, because we got a lot of mountain bikers and road bikers coming up in this mountain. We also have these turns. These are like 180 degree turns, and we got a change in sun. Uh, we got those chevrons. You guys know what those chevrons are all about if you watch my live streams. We also talked about the change in the uh, the sun with the shade, and we're gonna be going up to the top of Mount Lemon. Uh, this is gonna be a two-parter. We're gonna be going up the top of Mount Lemon, and there's gonna be more of a uh, forest type thing. So you're gonna have a lot of different shade structure stuff. So we got a, a light coming up here, or not light, but the sun's gonna be coming around this area. It's gonna be blinding. There it is. So your goal is to stay focused and look at your exits. Look at your road. Do not look up. Just be aware that it's coming. Kind of shield yourself. So we got bicyclists there. And that's another good thing about having a visor like this. So that way you can kind of block it like it's a hat. So you notice how I'm doing this with one hand. It's not to show off. It's just to show that you do not have to go fast. You do not have to counter steer hard on turns like this. You see a lot of crashes happen on these mountain roads because of massive, massive speed. When you do a lot of speed, you have to do a lot of counter steering, and that is a beautiful van, and I wish it was mine. All right, I think I got a bug in my, bug in my face. Anyways, we got more chevrons, we got more turns. Now this can get exhausting. So every single turn is a little bit of energy expenditure, and before you know it, a turn can be so exhausting that you just forget what you're doing and the fatigue will set in. So you kind of have to watch out, you know, get an idea of how you're feeling so that if you do have to pull over, pull over. And we're gonna be going over how to pull over on something like this pretty easily since this is a single lane, single lane, and there's no shoulder. Once again, that is another hazard. So I see a lot of people like wanting to come up here and go crazy in speed. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not a good idea, okay? Speeding up here is not a good idea. You see all these cracks. There's a lot of blind turns. Uh, we got a 30 mile an hour U-turn. So that can be an issue because you don't know who's coming around this blind turn. So if I stay in lane position one and they go and creep over the line, boom, I got hit. So the whole outside, inside, outside is not always the best option. So right now, outside is to this turn is great because I can see around the turn, but then when I switch over, I'm gonna do middle. I don't need to do inside. I just wanna stay away from these people over here if they ever come down the hill. So for me, middle, middle, middle is usually the best. So right now I can kind of see around, but I'm in a good spot so I don't hit anything over here and I don't have a car gonna hit me on this side and I can see around the turn, okay? So going the speed limit is very important because uh, if you're going too fast, for one, you're probably gonna get a ticket, especially up here on Mount Lemon, and two, you're gonna probably uh, go outside of your line. Another thing is that at a higher speed, you're not gonna see hazards before they come. So these lights, like see how it's just constantly changing light and then shadow, light, shadow, light, shadow. It can really mess up with your vision on the road. So right here, there's a lot of nasty tar snakes, a lot of road debris, a lot of uh, road stuff. So that's not good. Um, so my job is to look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down, look up, look down and I'm constantly looking where I need to go. I'm not looking up, look down, look over here, look over there, look at this, look at that. I'm not doing that. I'm making sure my road is clear because that is where my body is going, okay? I'm not gonna be going up the hill. I'm not gonna be going down the hill. I'm looking where I'm going. I'm zoning in, and that's what you guys need to do. Okay, we're on mile three, so it's paying attention to these mile markers. So let's say something happens. Like, let's say you crash and you've got cell phone service. Let's say I crash right here. But hey, I'm on mile marker three, I'm on Mount Lemon, I'm not exactly sure what road it is, but I'm on Mount Lemon, mile marker three from the from the bottom. Now people know where you're at. Uh, emergency services know where to go, all these different things. Okay, so we got parking pullouts. So let's say, here's one right here, real quick. Let's say you feel anxious, let's say you just, I don't, I don't, I'm, this is too much, this is too much, this is too much. You can always pull off, okay? So pulling off on one of these little shoulders is not a 
good idea. We could definitely do it in an emergency emergency um, because we're on motorcycles, but it's not a good idea because other cars are really big. Okay, so if you can wait, please, please, please wait until a pullout. So here's a pullout coming up. Actually, well, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. So this was kind of like a pullout. So what you want to do before the pullout is the speed limit's 35, so I'm going about 35. And what you do is you start to slow down, roll off the throttle. I'm in fifth gear, so I'm actually going to downshift because you have to use a little bit more throttle while you're doing this. You have to, to maintain speed going uphill, obviously. So I'm kind of waiting for the parking pullout. So when it gets closer and closer, I'm going to slow down, slow down, and all I have to do is roll off the throttle and look how fast it drops. Gravity and everything. Okay, I almost stalled. There we go, because it's that quick. So here's another pullout. So the next pullout, we'll go ahead and pull over. I'm like, man, I'm getting anxious. I'm getting anxious. We're going to pull over. All right, so mile marker four right here. We're starting to get a little cooler also. So here's a parking pullout. So the whole cool out part, so I'm going to roll off the throttle. I'm going to get off the road and straighten up, because you never know. There's a lot of gravel here. Straighten up, straighten up. And now while I'm doing slow speed stuff, I kind of got to look at the angle of the road, you know? I also want to pull up to the front because I don't want to stay in the back because other people are going to be pulling off, right? So I'm going to stay right here. I'm just going to relax. Ah, that was, that was stressful, stressful, stressful. So I'm going to relax a little bit. Now, how do I get back on? It's a blind turn, right? It's a blind turn. So we're kind of in a bad spot for this because I can't see and I don't know if anybody's speeding, so we have to kind of get ready to get up and go. Get up and go. Um, gravel here, so we're going to wait until tires get traction, and then we're going to move. So right now, I, I feel pretty confident, but I'm always going to be double checking. So first gear. Looks good, looks good. Looks good. Now I'm going to accelerate. Accelerate when you are in a straight line. So right now I'm not in a straight line, so I'm just maintaining speed. I'm in second gear, but I want to be in third. So I'm straight now. I shifted into third gear. I feel good in third gear. All right, so I was talking about how it gets a little bit colder up here. So the higher elevation, you get a little bit colder. Down in Tucson, um, I forgot how hot it is. Let's say, okay, so it's 86 degrees. It's gonna be 90 degrees up in Tucson. Okay, it's 90 degrees down in Tucson. On Mount Lemon, at the very top, it's 30 degrees colder. So be prepared for that. You know, down there, it's like, man, I'm sweating my balls off. I got a mess shirt, mess jacket, all this other crazy stuff. And when I get to the top, I'm freezing my balls off. And that's not good for multiple reasons. For one, let's say your hands get cold. You're wearing mesh gloves. Your hands are getting cold. They're getting stiff. So stiff hands, jerky movements, and it's not very uh, dexterous. I got distracted by these people. Uh, <laughs> it's not very good for when you try to reach for things. So. Hey, Messed up hands, cold hands, not good. Also shivering, when you shiver, you're making movements to the bike. Not good either. Um, you start thinking about, man, I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold. You're not thinking about the ride, the ride, the ride. So what you could do is pack in your backpack and a long sleeve shirt just in case, if you ever go up a mountain. It's always good to have. There you go, boom, 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 done, done, done. All right, the reason why I got a lot of stuff in the backpack is I got a drone and all those things and my cameras. All right, so once again, you got to watch out for these blind turns. There's also paint, okay? This paint doesn't really affect car drivers, the arrows, but it can affect us in a turn, so watch out for that. This is a blind turn once again. It's opened up the view, good. This is a blind turn, blind turn, blind turn, blind turn, opened, good. Now I can see around this turn. See, that's kind of how you have to treat every turn. Blind turn, blind turn, blind turn, blind turn, open. There's a car, good. There's a motorcyclist, good. We have a 30 mile per hour uh, suggestion with a switchback. What's up, buddy? We got other motorcyclists on the road. We're not here to compete. I'm not here to race. All right, so this is a long, sharp, continuous turn. Okay, so I could haul ass and have a lot of fun, but you see all these paint lines? You see all these tar snakes? It says watch for rocks. We got another turn coming up here. I could definitely race it and, and go fast and possibly knee drag if I really wanted to push my limits and use that tool in the toolbox, but we're not here to do that. For me, my version of riding is enjoying the fact that there's no cage. I like seeing the road. I like seeing all this. I like looking over here and not having a, an A post from the car in my way. I like to see this open area. For me, it's the beauty of the ride. Now for others, it's racing up these mountains. 
Okay, so which one are you? Okay. So if you're gonna do anything like this, make sure you do it nice and safe. So this is a blind turn. Okay, it's a blind turn, so I'm kinda relaxing. Opening up the view, good. So now I can see all the way to that exit. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus on that. There we go, we're gonna do this. And it's open, so good. So if I wanted to, I can accelerate now that it's nice and straight. But I'm already going above the speed limit, so I'm gonna slow down. There's no reason to. Once again, I'm enjoying the weather and it's already not dropped degrees. <laughs> All right, blind turn, blind turn, blind turn. If you notice that there's a lot of things that here that are blind turns. With mountain riding, you're gonna have pretty much every freaking turn a blind turn. And it's exhilarating and it's also scary. So you need to focus, zone in, go to the speed limit, apply some counter steering measures, um, not a whole bunch. You don't have to. If you notice, see, I'm just I'm just riding along, just kind of leaning my body a little bit. And you see all these tar snakes. So if you want, just go ahead and move off to the side, so you're not riding on top of the tar snakes. Usually, tar snakes are are a big hazard when it's really hot out. It's not so hot right now. So in the midday, if you're doing this in midday, let's say it's 100 degrees, 90 something degrees, the ground's gonna be super hot. It's gonna be nice and squishy. So you kind of got to watch out for that. Now, just like the uh, ride along commute from Indian Motorcycle Tucson to the interstate to a residential area, uh, this thing will probably die on me in 30 minutes. So we're just gonna let this play. This will be a nice, easy ride. So right here, we ha it says hikers and cattle, or not cattle, but horses and everything crossing. So it's giving you pre preparation to wa watch out for that. So Gordon Hibayashi, it's a, uh, it's a campsite, so we got people and horses possibly slow. Kind of got to watch out for this. Okay, kind of got to watch out for this. It's just share the road. You never know who's here. You never know if there's a horse. You never know if there's animals. Another thing you notice that uh, on Mount Lemon specifically, we went from cactus to now we got shrubbery. We got uh, smaller trees. We got more green. And with that, we got a little bit cooler weather. So when we have also this type of uh, vegetation, we also have animals. So you really have to watch out for animals. So uh, MC Rider did a great video. I just recently just watched it today, so I don't know when this video is going to be going out. Just watched it today, and he talked about uh, knee dragging and the tools of, uh, of a racer versus the tools of somebody that just wants to get from point A to point B and live. Okay, there's, a, there's two different things there. So there's also two different types of riders that go up this mountain. There's those that knee drag and those that want to go fast. And then there's those that just want to get to the top and have a cookie at the cookie shop up top. So for me, I used to be the one that wants to go fast. I have plenty of videos on my YouTube channel where I did that uh, a couple years ago, I think three years ago. Nowadays, I switched my, uh, my ideas. Uh, I switched what I wanted to do and I wanted to make it more safe. So what he was talking about in his video is that knee dragging uh, is, is a great tool for the people that want to go fast. It, it, it can help, you know, getting that lean angle, getting your body off, it definitely helps at that speed. But he also made a, a very valid point, and it's something that I, that I talked about in one of my, uh, my previous videos, my motorcycle tr uh, survival training videos, about the confidence. Uh, you can have the greatest skills in the world, but if you don't develop your mental skills, none of it's gonna matter. So you can have amazing skills, knee dragging, doing your thing, you know, going around this turn, this blind turn, I'm gonna go knee drag, all those different things. But if there's a rock in the road, and watch for ice, if there's a rock in the road and you never saw it, you're never going to miss it. You're never going to dodge it. You're never going to swerve out of the way. And if you're knee dragging, this is what he said, if you're knee dragging or you're in a position of racing, it's so right here, we're just gonna go ahead and get a good position. It's still useful, but you see I'm not knee dragging, I'm getting a good body position. Um, what he said that if you're in the knee drag position, you're not in a position uh, set up for a swerve. So right now I'm sitting upright. I'm 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 you know sitting ergonomically with the bike, and I'm in I'm ready for a swerve if I have to. If I have to swerve, I can swerve. I'm gonna swerve. I can swerve. Tar snake. I'm gonna swerve. I can do all those things. But if I'm knee dragging, I have to sit myself back up, and then do the swerve. Now I'm sure there's a way of doing it while you're knee dragging, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's probably not the safest. Once again, it's an emergency. But still, I'd rather just do the speed limit, use that tool in my trade, do, do the speed limit, a little bit of body, uh, angle and language and position. There you go, that's the word. 
little bit, so then if I have to, I'm leaning, I'm in turn, oh, I can do this, and then I can swerve. But if I'm completely down there, completely, 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 I have to lift my body and the bike up and get my, my butt back in position because it's kind of hanging off, and then I get, get ready for swerve. That's too long. So I really liked his video. I really liked his video. He talked more about the mental aspect and making decisions. That's the biggest thing. Use every tool in your toolbox, but only use the specific tool for what it's used for, okay? He talked about a hammer and a screwdriver. Both great tools, both different purposes. And right now, for me, I just want to get to point B from my point A, and I want to survive. All right, so now that I had a little, little fun talk about that, let's talk about now that we got wide open areas and we got some trees okay so right now it's completely open i can see everything but i can't see around this corner nice and easy but you notice how it's shaded over there so what i do is when i'm riding i take a quick look take a quick look take a quick look okay there's a car coming that way i'm not surprised just kidding it's not a car it's a it's a bicyclist that way i'm not surprised on these turns so i'm just like you know zoned in i'm only looking at my my lane i'm looking at my lane only doing that only doing that and all of a sudden a car comes around I'm like oh crap and then i i mess up you see that in some of the videos. So what I like to do is that when I'm doing this and I'm looking through my turn, I glance for a quick second because I can see down straight. Quick second, boom, back on. No cars, perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this. Now if I do get surprised, I have to just like retrain my body to stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. Right now I can't see around this turn. Stay focused, stay focused. I can see ahead, there's a car coming. Okay, so now I know there's a car coming. I'm not gonna be surprised by it. Pretty easy, pretty good, everything's good. We got a bunch of cars. That's another thing, if we have a bunch of cars lined up, they might be impatient. So be prepared if you absolutely have to, to swerve over and get over here so somebody can keep going. It's scary, but you gotta do it. And if you're knee dragging, you're doing anything like that, you're not gonna be in a good position. So I'm gonna open up my, my view right here, get in middle position, very good, I can see around. And I, somebody made a comment about me saying very good to myself. Uh, yeah, I do that, I do that. I like to give myself some confidence. I kind of like to boost it up, but I also like to uh, just sound like an idiot and talk and talk and talk. <laughs> All right, so we got some more trees now. So we got some uh, some vegetations and we got some animals possibly, so you gotta watch out for that. Once again, you gotta watch out for that. I know there's a creek down there, so you know, water, drinking, all that stuff. Also watch out for rocks coming down. Um, it's not necessarily like, it, it's almost like getting hit by lightning when it's like this, no clouds. Uh, when a rock's gonna come down, it's gonna land on you. The main thing is you have to understand that there's there could possibly be a rock that fell down 10 minutes ago up here and it's in the road. Gotta watch out for that, especially during these turns. Okay, so you see how it just changes? It keeps changing. That can play a huge role in your visibility. So what I like to do is I like to just stay focused and use this to block. This is what I love about adventure helmets and touring helmets. You got this, so I can block the sun from it changing on me so this is pointed down i understand that but right now the sun's in my eyes now it's not use what you got okay so right now i'm looking ahead and to kind of get rid of the whole changing of shade no shade shade no shade is that i'm looking at the two lines now this can only really happen if oh there's a bird on the road oh it's a squirrel it can only happen hey there's motorcyclists it can only happen if um you have good painted lines okay so these these two painted lines, is that a cop? No, nope, it's not a cop. <laughs> Got a little, there, you know, downshift. Sorry guys, I don't wanna get a ticket. Last time I was up here, I almost got I almost got a ticket. So the line thing, I look at the line, so it keeps, sh the, the middle of the road keeps changing from shade, no shade, no shade, shade, no shade. I'm looking at these two lines, and like I said, it only works in areas where, you know, it's painted well. But I'm making sure I'm keeping between these two lines. That's all I care about. That's all I care about, I'm looking over here. So if I have to, I slow down because I can't see my visibility as messed up. I slow down and I just try to keep it between these two lines, okay? It's just like coloring, okay? I still have trouble keeping it between the lines when I color, but still, you gotta, you gotta work on this. Okay, so now it's nice and open. We got sun to our back now though. So that's another thing is that sun can change position basically. And let me take that back, we change position. The sun stays there, okay? Uh, but, since we're changing positions, we have sun in our eyes just a, re just a little while ago. Now they have sun in their eyes. So if they're making a turn coming around this blind turn, they have no sun in their eyes. The moment they come around this turn, they don't see me. They have sun in their eyes. They might have creeped over. So I'm going to kind of scoot over just a little bit. Take this nice and easy. Nice and easy. 
Very good. So there's a little bit of rock on the ground. Okay. Some some shade. No shade. Shade. No shade. Keep it between the lines. Very good. I can accelerate out of this. Now, typically I'd go a little bit faster, but I'm already going five over. So I'm gonna. It's a 35 mile an hour road, guys. Supposedly. That's what the officer said last time. So now we're gonna go ahead and just keep relaxing. Now the views can get to you. It's a beautiful view. Beautiful. But focus, focus, focus. Now, if you want to pull over because the view is beautiful, let's say there's a, a, a vista point on this side, just on the way back down, look at it. Okay? Just enjoy the ride itself. And, but if you want to, if you do want to pull over, then see there's a vista point right here, is what you can do is get to the next pull out and, or straight away when it's safe, pull off to the side and do a U-turn when it's safe. Okay? You have to be careful because you can't see around these turns. It's a beautiful vista point. I'm good. I'm gonna go to the next one. We'll take a quick break at the next one. So we got somebody behind me, okay? So that could be uh, an issue for new riders. You're taking this road nice and slow. Let's say you're maybe even just barely doing the speed limit, which, which is kind of me. And you get pressure to go faster and faster and faster. Do not go faster, faster, faster. Not only can you get a ticket, but it's definitely not safe for you. So whenever you do a group ride and you're a new rider, you should probably be up front because you set the pace and the motorcycle riders behind you should understand that. Thing is, the car behind me is not in my group, so they want to get where they want to go and they want me out of the way. So typically you can pull over on these parking pullouts if you're just getting too anxious. But we got a Vista, Windy Point Vista right here, a quarter mile up, and I'm pretty sure he's going to stop. We're going to stop a little bit after that. Do not feel rushed. Do not feel rushed. All right, so you see the slippery tire, slippery slopperty. Take that uh, seriously to be quite honest. So that means that there's something up here that will create four wheels to get a little slippery slopperty. Okay, we have two wheels. All right, so I see a transition. Oh, and we're on concrete. Transition, there's a little bit of wetness right here. I don't know what that is, so I'm gonna stay off it. So the transition to a concrete can make things slipperier. We got a lot of people coming out here. This is, that was Windy Point, so we're mile 14. Transition back. All right, three mile an hour is a uh, squiggly line. All right, so we still got the little oils or whatever it is. It looks kind of dry, so I'm not too big, I'm not too issue, not too much of an issue, jeez. Warning, icy spots next two and a half miles. All right, so we kind of got to watch out for that. Once again, we're just going the speed limit. We've been constantly focused on hazards on the road, so we're already ahead of it. It's kind of like when you're going the speed limit and you set cruise control over the speed limit. Or I'm going to pull over here so I can let this guy sort of straightening up. So you could do that in a quick, easy movement. So I'm going to actually park it right here. No, I don't like this spot. So right now, so let's say we had to turn around. Let's say we had to turn around. So I'm looking this way. I don't see anybody. Definitely don't see anybody over there. Looking, looking, looking. So now I'm in this lane. So I should be fine. There we go. All right, so when we set up for a parking spot on these mountains, it can be really funky because there's gonna be, you know, a downhill grade, uphill grade, all these things. Your best bet is to do what I'm doing where you're kind of going through the parking space and then aiming out, aiming to the direction that you want to go. That's typically what I do. So that was riding up a mountain, but I just want you to see what it is that I'm talking about. These mountains. Beautiful views. Let's say I need to take a break. I'm gonna take a break. Oh, yeah. Ugh. So we just rode up all this. Beautiful views. There's a bunch of trees up there. There's different hazards that we gotta deal with up there. If you notice how it's all desert, high desert area. That's Tucson way over there. It's as simple as that. Before you know it, you're really high up. And if this makes you anxious to go down, I have a video coming up where I'm going to talk about going downhill. All right, we're going to do part two going up the rest of the mountain because after this portion, there is a ton of trees. The trees make a huge difference in climate. There's also the point that it snows up there, so the road is pretty damaged and the road gets a little bit more narrow. So if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you check out the previous video, episode one, where I commute from Indian Motorcycle Tucson to the interstate, and 
I give you all those tips. Okay? Let me know what you think in the comments. Tell me what you want to see next. Do you want me to ride in the rain? you want me to ride in the dark? you want me to ride, uh, well, obviously down the mountain? Tell me what you want me to ride, and I'll talk to you. That said, I hope you ride safe, be safe, and I'll see you around.